What is going on, all of you awesome people out there? It is your boy Kurt McKell here, coming today with a hardware mining update. So, of course, we are going over the 24 hour uh, probability of the E300, how many coins did we knock back in 24 hours, as well as kind of going over the payouts that we've accumulated so far, how frequently they're coming around, and kind of how much is in each payout. Uh, the minimum is set to 500, so that's usually when it comes to, but sometimes we get more than that. Now, of course, we also kind of dig into uh, a new, hash, the new tool hashrate.no, which isn't entirely new, but new to me, and shows a lot of pretty awesome uh, data that we will also cover. So, let's dig in. All right guys so here on hashrate.no gives us a full breakdown of caspa in itself as it sits the current network hash rate as well as the network difficulty and you can get a full breakdown of that here on their website so here is the current hash rate uh chart you can kind of see the breakdown right here and January and December, we were getting the most amount of hash rate on the network. It has kind of come down a little bit, and we're sitting around 341 tera hashes on the network currently. And the difficulty is sitting at a 81.13k. Hey. All right. What I do like is their calculator. It is pretty fa, so we can put in 14,000. Uh, 330 for our hash rate because that is what an E300 puts back and 535 watts fortunately 10% minor fee because team red minor takes 10% this is what it currently sits at profitability wise per their calculator um, after fees and everything we should be getting around 824 caspa per day um, according to their calculator if we were solo mining with this amount of hash rate we would actually be knocking back around three blocks a day and there is 277 caspa in each block so that's about 831 caspa so around the same amount that you would if you were just straight up mining it versus uh solo mining so as you can see right here our current breakdown for the last 24 hours was 870 caspa uh earned via the pool now what i do find kind of interesting is we can go down here into finance go into payouts and you can kind of get a gist of like what all the payouts were and when they were right now if you go back to page two you can kind of see that it's been pretty well you know every you got two blocks, one block, two blocks, one block, two blocks, one block, two blocks, one block. And I think that's because of the way the payouts are laying are coming out. Um, but it is averaging out um, over about over a thousand caspa per day being paid out um, via the pool, not to mention just like what it is in 24 hours but the 24 hours it is hitting 870 on the weekly it is 5677 caspa so i find that actually pretty interesting i do and would actually like to test this out on average on solo mining um i've heard of quite a few people have been uh pretty profitable on solo mining but I have watched this go up and down today from three blocks to almost for four blocks and then back down to three blocks. So I'm curious if the sway and difficulty has yielded better block rewards um, in a day than actually mining. Because uh, if you can get 277 times that by four, if you can get four blocks in a day, you're over a thousand caspa, right? And that puts you at a better result than what you are before all of your pool fees and everything and your electric cost. All right. So of course I'm just looking at caspa. I think I have this set at one cents. 
So that is the current breakdown of Caspa on the E300 in the last 24 hours. Now we can check the miner real fast and as well as we can also check temperatures and um, give them a look sees real quick. So currently as it sits, the E300 is actually running extremely cool. Uh, it's been extremely cold here and okay. We've actually had three days of uh, basically nonstop ice, uh, just raining. And uh, there was one day where it was like pouring rain outside and we were like, oh, it's pouring rain. And you walk outside and it was literally just ice falling out of the sky. It's pretty wild. But right now, board temperature is around 30 to 30. 32 to 31 degrees um chip temperature is 55 to 54 of course max temp now let's go check out the miner and as you can see right here it's actually still running extremely well 14.33 giga ashes around 4.7 per board now it's actually extremely efficient uh, about 46c according to the miner per board all right, at a total of 14.33 gig ashes. Flipping fantastic. I absolutely love this thing. I got a hold of a new cooler for my BCU, and I will actually be testing out, I should be testing out Team Red Miner for my BCU uh, rather shortly. So stay tuned for that to continue on with uh, FPGA Fridays, as RetroMite calls it. Much love, guys. Peace out. Catch you on the flip side. Keep your hash rates up. Keep your watts down low. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know every time that we go live here on the channel. This is just a real quick update on the E300. I'm just going to try and give you a weekly update on something uh, FPGA related uh, for FPGA Fridays. So, changing up the schedule a bit to help out the schedule here at the house. And we'll see you all the next time, guys, soon. Half a megawatt at the farm. Yo. Later.